enough of the positivity and fanfare, alright, this ain't the Oscars. A more accurate representation of movie tie-ins would be to look at rubbish ones. I managed to find 10 good games last week, but I don't think I could have gone much further. In researching this list, however, I actually managed to find way more than 10. Yep, that stat I pulled out of thin air last week, that 80% of movie tie-ins suck, might have actually been an underestimate. I couldn't even satisfyingly narrow the list down to 10, so instead, here are 15 of the worst video game movie tie-ins on the Game Boy. Well, actually 16, but that'll become clear in due time. And I didn't even feature any Disney ones, if you can believe that. They'll get their own special... <clears throat> recognition at a later date. Last Action Hero Perhaps more notorious for its Super Nintendo, Genesis, or even Amiga versions for being amongst the worst games on those systems, the film that got a bunch of nominations in the anti-award show The Razzies in 1994, including Worst Screenplay, Worst Director, Worst Actor, and even Worst Picture, it's been called one of the most unfinished films ever, despite a budget of more than $100 million. Looking at the Game Boy version, it's safe to say it didn't escape either. For a story featuring Arnie, it's kind of nice that you don't have any weapons. Everyone else does, but you have to resort to punching or kicking every enemy in an uber-specific way, using one of the stiffest control schemes I've ever felt, while they just flay the shit out of you. Die at any point on a stage and you'll be redoing it from the beginning. Impossible to get a hit in without taking one yourself, this is one of the dumbest, most unfair beat-em-ups going. Worse than Double Dragon 3, and I don't say that lightly. Dick Tracy not nearly as bad as Last Action Hero, but that's as complimentary as I can get with Dick Tracy. It's a bit better once you get guns, but the hand-to-hand -hand combat you rely on most of the time is about as inaccurate as it's possible to be. So often you and an enemy will be nose-to-nose, -nose, but punching past each other. Hey, at least the AI are as hapless and as useless as you are, but that's hardly a solution, is it? Rather than improving the player control and hit detection, you just make the computers one worse? Sure, it's more balanced now, but that doesn't make it any good. The Rugrats Movie For how late this is in the Game Boy's life, for a point of reference, the Game Boy Color was already out, and this would soon get re-released in color as it happens, this is a super stiff, super clunky collect -em up platformer where the premise revolves around a baby who's been left in the garage, surrounded by mutant rats and exposed electrical equipment. You have to pick up a certain number of items. It's impossible to tell how many you have because the number at the bottom of the screen doesn't increase at all when you get stuff, and at level end it actually counts how many objects you found, and that number doesn't correlate with the one on the game screen, or the actual number of stuff you collected, so God knows what's actually going on here. Oh look, it was published by THQ. Say no more. Small Soldiers Sticking with THQ for a minute, but oh god, it's Teartex as well? Ugh, oh, I thought by not including any Disney titles on this list, I'd managed to avoid them for a week. But no such joy, unfortunately. The PlayStation version was by DreamWorks and EA. Why couldn't we have that one? Literally the best thing about this cartridge is the lurid bright green colour you see when you pop it in your Super Game Boy. I don't think I've ever seen that colour before. You play as Archer, the... Well, the archer. Look, okay, it wasn't a great movie. You see him holding that bow and arrow there? You'd think you could, you know, fire it? Nope, not until the last level. And given how absolute nutsacks the control scheme is, because it's freaking tear text, so of course it is, you will not get that far, I guarantee it. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes it's weird how such a naff old film got video games anyway, but to make them as weird and messy as this one, yeah, I really don't know who this is supposed to be for. B is jump, which is a cardinal sin in itself, but then A does this weird kicking attack, made even odder by the fact that you can pick up swords in the game. You don't use them in the traditional sense, but can throw them at stuff? Even more even odder is that you do so by pressing start. A? Yeah, even, even more even odder uh, is that you can press select to ride a skateboard, but then how can you control it seeing as how your left thumb is now pressing select? Just, what the hell is this game? Dark Man. Ocean did have quite a mixed bag on Game Boy. On one hand, they did cool stuff like Robocop. On the other is the tie-in to the Liam Neeson explosion fest that, despite some pretty cool visual effects, for the early 90s at least, suffered from an absolute cringe fest of a script and horrendous acting. 
The game is a very lackluster beat-em-up where your punches and kicks are so weak that all the enemies take like 15 hits to go down. This wouldn't matter so much if it weren't for the really strict time limit. There's realistically no way to get to the end of some levels without running out at least once. The Z-axis placement, the in and out of the screen thing, is far too precise to ever feel comfortable. So often it'll look like you're making contact with an enemy, but your attacks will just ghost through because you're not on the same plane or whatever. Could have been good, but wasn't. Hook. We talked about this quite recently, so I won't go into it too much, but essentially, the backgrounds are too busy, hit detection way too strict, levels too cryptic, and unfortunately, the gameplay itself just isn't fun enough to put up with all that bollocks. Moving on. Navy Seals. This one's most annoying trope is that if any infinitesimally small pixel of yours touches anything of an enemy's, that's instant death. What kind of uber military man is that? I thought Navy SEALs were supposed to be like the pinnacle of tough, but I can't even touch the sole of the shoe of the enemy without dying? How are you ever supposed to get anywhere if that's the case? Introduce a health bar into this game and you've got a halfway decent experience, but the absolute idiocy of immediate and frequent deaths just completely kills it. Rubbish. Robocop 2. Yeah, it's so weird how the first Robocop game, while not perfect, did loads of stuff right and was a good time. The sequel is just mad. You have to jump so much here, which I'm pretty sure Robocop didn't, and can only shoot forwards, which again is strange coming from a guy who is supposed to be a real sharpshooter. That was his thing, right? Some enemies you can't hit at all because of this, unless you're able to pull off the frame-perfect jump shot thing. Again, rubbish. Cutthroat Island. One of the biggest cinema bombs of the 90s, in fact, of all time if you adjust for inflation, losing over $105 million at the box office in the 90s, this Gina Davis and Matthew Modine pirate adventure was utter codswallop. In order to try to recoup some of their losses, the production house aggressively marketed the arsehole out of it, producing late library games for the SNES, Mega Drive, Game Boy, Game Gear. Note that this came out in 1996, but the graphics look like something from the late 80s. Combat is tedious, far too long-winded, and just not very compelling. The side-scrolling walking sections are boring as hell, and there's an incredibly unfair cart level later on that I've never been able to get past. To make something that feels this dated on Game Boy, you really have to be going some. I'm sorry, Game Boy, I don't mean that. But god damn, you had some awful video games on you. Cliffhanger. Another one of those incredibly mid-90s movies that portrayed that tired old cliché of Americans good, foreigners evil terrorists. Sylvester Stallone has put out some dog shit in his time, hasn't he? And while this is not quite as down there as like Rocky V or Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, it's still not really very good. Although I will say, the main character is nothing if not supremely macho. Well, not in this game. You get attacked by dogs. You get attacked by birds. You get hurt by some snow falling off a roof. I don't know about rescuing a treasury jet filled with millions of dollars. This guy shouldn't be anywhere near a mountain. He should sit down before he gets vertigo from standing up for too long. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade you can, to a certain extent, forgive mid-tier B-movies or whatever for having terrible video games attached to them, because what do you expect, really? But when you get blockbuster titles like this as an IP, there really is no excuse. How many miserable games based on Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, or whatever are there? You'll get good ones, sure, but you just never know, that's the problem. Sometimes they're like this, an utterly daft platformer with the literal loosest connection to the plot possible, labyrinthine levels that are timed too strictly and just go dark when your torch runs out, making navigation even harder. Like, what was the point in this game, apart from taking money off of fans of the franchise who didn't know any better? It's bad, man. The Lawnmower Man if you've seen this movie, first off, I'm sorry for your loss. Secondly, you might be wondering how it could ever translate to a video game. Well, the virtual reality bits make sense, I suppose, and those sections in-game actually aren't too bad. They're not good, but at least they kind of work. The platforming bits in between are 
utterly ridiculous. Endlessly respawning enemies, minimal contact, one-touch deaths, got that a lot on this list. Awful controls. Some fancy faux 3D flying bits do not make up for the dreadful bulk of this game. The Page Master. Speaking of silly one-touch deaths, one of Macaulay Culkin's lesser-known movies got this fantasy-based platformer on quite a few consoles. The camera on this one flicks about so much it gives me motion sickness, and to top it off, everything moves way too fast, meaning the response time you'll need to avoid everything is beyond most people. Slowed down to like 50% and given some sort of health bar, this might even verge into the realm of the playable. As it is here though, it's an utterly miserable experience. Oh yeah, and if you die, you get kicked right back to the level select screen. Don't we love it when games do that? You'll never get anywhere here. Home Alone and finally, where would a terrible movie tie-in list be without Home Alone? The NES version, as we all know, sucked, and the Game Boy version is very similar. The McAllister's home is covered with ice on every surface, weapons do nothing, and the premise of finding all the family treasures just to dump them into a laundry chute is just idiotic. Like, the bandits couldn't just go down to the basement and get them all? You've made it easier for them, if anything. All your stuff's in one pile now, and pff, they probably broke in that way anyway. And as a bonus this week, here's Home Alone 2. It's even worse, even dumber, even more infuriating. Trashing my favourite goddamn Christmas movies too, you sick, sick bastards! And that's our list. I know there are plenty more that I missed out, but we can only stomach so much negativity in one video. Let me know anyway. I dread to think what abominations the Game Boy Color and Advance libraries have in store. Maybe we'll revisit movie tie-ins later on. If you know of any great or terrible ones on those later systems, give them a shout out. See you later on, guys.